Okay, now that we have understood how to record information uh, from a research paper, let's focus on reading a research paper. Now that we have discussed that you start a research paper by identifying the value of a particular area or value of the area in general in, in the management or in business research or in management research. Now, if we look at this paper, this paper actually starts with identifying the value or the importance of studying servant leadership. Now, the first paragraph is on why servant leadership? What's, what's different? Why it is important? The second paragraph now or the third paragraph might be if you want to further elaborate. The next thing you do is you start identifying the gaps and limitations in existing research just as done in this research paper. This research paper now talks about how a research on servant leadership is limited and why it should be studied in maybe other sectors. In this case, now they are focused on higher education institutions. And continuing in the same breath, now they talk about further gaps or further limitations of existing research. Because the focus of this study is actually on development of a scale to measure servant leadership in higher education. First, what they have done is they have identified that research on servant leadership in higher education is significantly limited and why it should be studied. So it's not enough that you just write on, okay, this research is limited. So obviously it is limited. And if it is limited, why it should be further enhanced? Why one should conduct research in this particular area? Following this, the next step is you further elaborate on the gaps. In this case, the study is focused on scale development. So this, this particular paragraph or this section now starts to focus on why there is a need to study or develop scale pertinent to servant leadership and what are the limitations of the existing skills. So, in spite of frequent indications in management research for development of context dependent scale, now research has called for or existing research has called for context dependent scale. For instance, what do you mean by context dependent scale? That for higher education, if you are to measure a particular concept in higher education, they should have their own scale. If you want to measure it in maybe corporations, they should have their own scale. So, and similarly, now the author is proving that there is very limited research. For instance, through extensive search and peer reviewed databases, the authors could not find a scale to measure servant leadership behavior in higher education. This is evident in the contextual analysis of which found that servant leadership theory is being mainly applied in school settings, not in higher education. Further elaborating, obviously the authors further elaborate now, where does the, the author find these gaps? How did he find this zoo? Obviously, when you search existing databases, you come across these tables, or sorry, these papers. And when you read through those papers, just as we identified uh, from this, that Chukhtai paper, the gaps in existing research or their recommendations for future research, we use that particular information in our introduction, in our research. So I read Zhu's paper and in that paper, there was this statement that additionally, the servant leadership has been, has been mainly adopted in the business domain. Moreover, the theoretical and empirical studies of servant leadership are still relatively short. More empirical studies are required to further define measures and validate servant leadership. So once you search databases, you find this information in either their introduction when, when they are writing their introduction and maybe in their limitations and future research direction. And from there, you can use this information in your own research to elaborate the gaps and limitation in your study. Now further, moving further, again, this paragraph is context specific, focusing on the need to study servant leadership in higher education. Now, having done that, having established the need to study servant leadership in education, the the step is elaborate on the gaps and limitations of existing research. How do you do that? 
once you have filled that excel sheet once you have identified the gaps and limitation in existing research once you have identified what existing researchers have proposed for future research the next step is writing about those gaps with references through support now if you read this so according to when Darren Dock and others 2014 servant leadership research is highly is relatively is in a relatively early stage and is significantly limited again how did you get this information so when you search through the databases you come across these papers when you read their introduction when you read their limitations and future research direction they would have mentioned these things so you keep that information in the excel sheet and when you are writing your own paper you just copy that information in here and start writing it now how do you write it this is how you write these things now how do you get acquainted how to write read read and read the more you read the more you understand how to write again similarly keep reading this paragraph and this this calls for again we have given the reference of chuktai 2018 the paper we just read and what what did Chuktai said? Chuktai said that you have to include other mediators. Moreover, inclusion of variables as mediators can further explain the mechanisms through which servant leadership impacts Im, impacts on different employee-related outcomes. This was already there in the limitations and future research directions. Well, what we did, we just copied that information in here and gave a reference to further support our argument. Now we are not just focusing on servant leadership this study focuses on other variables as well so when you download research papers pertinent to other variables like career and life satisfaction those variables will have their own limitations and you can use those limitations pertinent to your study for instance they have mentioned that career satisfaction could serve as a useful mediating role in explaining the mechanism of impact of servant leadership on life satisfaction so Further, Chuktai uh, has asked, okay, now Chuktai asked for the inclusion of the variable, so this is already mentioned. Now, additionally, research in area of life satisfaction has been criticized due to its lack of focus on work domain organizational settings and has primarily focused on non working samples, for instance, students, adolescents, children, and people having health issues. So now you are actually targeting that life satisfaction is limited the research on servant life uh, on life satisfaction is limited and it has not focused on work domain or organizational settings and higher education institutions or higher education or universities are key organizations that work in our society so when you read through these papers you identify the limitations from their introduction from their limitations and future research directions and then you use that text in writing your own introduction how do you do it this is how you do it so once you have explained all these gaps and limitations of existing research once you have identified how existing research is limited once you have identified these are the weaknesses rather than weaknesses we should use the word gaps limitations shortcomings maybe of the existing research the next step is you have expressed all these things the next step is what are the contributions of your study? So how do you mention the contributions of this study or your study? It's important that once you have highlighted the limitations and gaps of the existing research like this, and same goes for other studies as well. Like for instance, let's see this paper. Now this paper obviously starts with the role of servant leadership. Once done, this paper talks about or let's go through this particular paragraph. Eva et al. 2019 proposed a categorization of servant leadership research into three stages. The first focused on conceptual development, second on developing and validating measures, and the third, till present, focusing on complex model development. Currently in the third phase, some studies include different variables as mediators or moderators to further explain the mechanism through which servant leadership impacts on different employee outcomes. The present study takes career satisfaction as mediator and life satisfaction as an outcome variable. Now what we are doing here is that we are extending the existing research 
and we are in the third phase of servant leadership research. And this paragraph, in this statement, what we are doing is we are expressing how existing research can be further elaborated, further extended. And what limitations, what gaps this current or existing research or this research actually is extending. Now, obviously, this research is focused on higher education. So more or less, you will see the same text that has been previously mentioned. Same goes for life's career and life satisfaction. You would say, well, okay, this is the similar research. So what they are doing new. So what, what, what's new in this research? This is our research. But if you look, look at it, this research actually focused on one country, Spain. Now we extended this, our research, or more or less the same text was used, but this, in this now, the research was extended to other countries as well, China and Pakistan. And this is a significant contribution when you are doing cross-cultural research. So what we did was we extended the research from Spain and obviously we did change some text as well and now focused our research on China and Pakistan as well and did cross-cultural research. So this is how we extended our research and we did talk about it as well. Here. Yeah. Why cross-cultural research is important and why there are limitations pertinent to cross-cultural research in, on servant leadership. And how did we get this information? Obviously, reading through latest research. Now, going back to our topic uh, and going back to our uh, expression of gaps, limitations. So once you have expressed the gaps, once you have expressed the limitations that you have collected from existing research, the next step is or the final step in writing your introduction is you express the contribution of your study. Once you know that these are the gaps, once you know that these are the limitations of existing research and these are the limitations and gaps that you are going to address, the next step is what are the contribution of your study? So you start writing the contributions like this. The present study attempts to address multiple gaps and in doing so makes important contribution. The first contribution is that this is the first study that provides a conceptualization of servant leadership in higher education settings and develops a multi-dimensional scale to measure and assess its psychometric properties. Hence, making a significant contribution to the existing leadership theory with a valid scale on servant leadership in higher education. So this is the first contribution. The second contribution is assessment of mediating variables. Second, assess the mediating role of career satisfaction between servant leadership and life satisfaction. No previous study to the best of author's knowledge and through search in peer-reviewed databases had empirically explored the effects of servant leadership on these two work outcomes in, a, in an academic setting. So there have been studies on servant leadership and life satisfaction, but not in higher education. And there is no study to the best of author's knowledge on the impact of servant leadership on these two variables in academic set settings. So this is a significant contribution. Now, how do you, for you further elaborate that? However, research has shown that servant leadership can increase employee satisfaction with life in settings other than higher education, but not in education. Now, although the impact of servant leadership on car career satisfaction is yet to be stud studied, leadership has found or has been found to significantly impact career satisfaction. L leadership has impacted career satisfaction, but there is no evidence whether servant leadership affects career satisfaction. There might be other leadership styles that, that can affect career satisfaction. Now, it's important that you mention the theory that you are using. How do you get to know what theory I am using when you search existing research on these databases that you are interested in studying? So once you search these databases that you are that that on the variables on the articles and focusing on the variable that you are start interest, interested in studying, you come across different theories. Then you keep record of those theories. And while you are reading the introduction and literature, you get to know how these theories have been used to express the relationship between variables. And then in your contribution, you mention that hence based on leader member exchange theory, the study intends to ascertain the importance of servant leadership in shaping career and life satisfaction. So this research actually uses LMX leader member exchange theory to express the relationship between servant leadership in shaping career and life satisfaction.
So this is your theoretical contribution. This is your contribution to the theory. And how do you get to know the theory that which theory shall I use? So when you collect the articles, you download the articles and when you're searching through the articles, you will get to know, okay, this article is focused on this variable and this variable is a, a key variable in my study. Now, what variable or what, sorry, what theory have they used to express how this variable is related to other variables? And when you read through this theory, obviously reading will help you understand the conceptualization of the theory. And then you will get to know how you can use that particular theory in your own study. So this is how you read the research paper or the introduction of a research paper, how you identify the value of your research, how do you identify the gaps and limitations of existing research and how you mention the contribution of your study. So I hope that this would have helped you understand how you can read through and understand the introduction of a